You do? Uh, yeah, well, I'm vegetarian and I don't really wear clothes, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Wow. Yeah, secret. secret oh, right there. Yeah. There's a few other things. Last time I saw you, I looked at you back to the same, not younger. What can I say? Kids don't eat protein and, and you know, don't wear clothes. I eat <laughs> recipe for success. I eat beef jerky when I sit in a sauna, so I'm 10 years older than that. <laughs> Same, it is either. Yeah, right. I'm on the keto. Maybe that's the wrong way to go. You know? Keto is great if you're looking to lose weight and, and build, you know build you know solid mass, but it's apparently bad for your cellular DNA and RNA and those things. Anyway, uh, you guys want to gather around? You want to see how you did? Yeah. yeah. So today was a very special night uh, at the Go Center because it was our end of year self evaluation. We have 14 problems, all of them are black to play. You guys had just actually only about 40 minutes to work through them, so I cut your time short. I feel okay about this, I don't feel bad. Uh, and uh, the idea, according to the book that I got them out of, is if, if you get about uh, 12 of them right, the book says you're about 6Q. <laughs> and if you get nine of them right, the book says you're about 8Q. And if you get about five or six of them right, the book says you're 10Q. And if you get like four right, you're like somewhere 11, 12Q. And if you get below that, well, then no one's counting. <laughs> so my first question, how many do you each think you got right? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero? <laughs> no faith? Maybe five? I think I got most of them, but that's about how I feel. I feel, you know, yeah. feel pretty confident. I felt good, though I'm sure there was, I was wrong on many. But I right. felt good about my choices. Well, mo most of you guys here did record your answers on Kifu, on Kifu paper, which you guys are ready to to bestow and, and uh, you know, have it permanently ingrained on the internet as far as your results. Oh no, <laughs> I didn't realize that was part of tonight. Oh yeah, man, we gotta, we gotta take a poll. <laughs> All right, so anyway, these problems, we have 40 problems. They're in about four and a half different categories. We have some opening, and just barely will touch a start and mid-game problems. We have some Tsuji and shape problems, and we have some life and death problems, we have some end game problems. So part of the idea of this evaluation is also figure out where you're weakest. So as we're doing these different problems, figure out where you were successful and try to figure out where you were terrible. And then you can form your New Year's resolution and go forth into 2020, working hard on your weaknesses and uh, becoming a better go player. So this is the first problem. You guys ready? Yes. You have any candidates? Yeah. Give me a candidate. So build the Moyo, what a great candidate. Now I did promise actually before class I'd give you guys some of these as multiple choice. And I didn't, because <laughs> I just didn't. It's just me. It's not really me. I, I was looking at these problems, I was like, you know, these you guys can, you guys Oh, no, no, I'm upside down. Oh, you're upside down? Yeah, I put that. Ah, jump out there, okay. I was gonna say, this is also a good move. <laughs> but okay, there's a candidate, there's a candidate, other candidates. That's, that's what a, I That's did. a candidate. That. That's a candidate. <laughs> Any other candidates you guys want to put on the board? Pretty darn. It's like Black is doing really. Yeah. Black is doing really well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. the same. I mean, maybe not. Yeah. Okay, that one. Even if it's not the perfect move. Oh, do we have like? Oh, can you go, go get the glass, the green, the green and red or blue or stones. He's got pulls in. Oh, there you go. Yeah, go get, go get like the, the red or blue so stones. I did not pincer. All right, so good. So, so between the uh, eleven or twelve of you, you guys got five different good moves, six different good moves. They're gonna come up with green stones. We'll mark them with that. Uh, I'll tell you, one of these moves is the correct answer. <laughs> Uh, actually, the other two moves that you guys picked of the of the Did book. You want? Yeah, I want the shiny ones because I don't know. Actually, these are kind of nice too. I was gonna say like fuck these, but they actually would show up well on the camera. Yeah, I think. But I want the shiny ones. Yeah, All right. Because you know, shiny. Yeah, shiny red ones. Shiny. Uh, except I can't open the box. It looks like a tab on my side. Is it a tab? Or, oh, it's a tab, not a hinge. So there we go. Now we're now we're. Cooking. I can't believe. Does red mean good or bad? Red means candidate. Oh. Red means danger. Like maybe? I don't know. <laughs> there you go. There's your candidates. All right. How, so one, one of these moves is, is the correct you know, book answer. Um, but the book also gives multiple choice answers. You guys find the other two multiple choice options the book gave you. So, 
So the uh, the multiple choice here. We'll, we'll we'll take some off. This jump out. Uh, it's okay, but it's it's a little me has one meaning. It's like I just want to help this stone out get a little bit stronger. It's not really taking points. It's just running to the center. We don't actively want to play moves that just run to the center for the sake of running to the center. Usually, maybe you could say it does aim at a little bit of an invasion over here, but mm, it doesn't do a whole lot more than that. I'm going to take it off. Over here, this one is very greedy, but it's a nice move. Uh, this one's actually one of the multiple choice answers in the book. It says, just take a big giant moyo over here and just make more points than your opponent can. Mm. It's a nice move. It's not the best move. Uh, I'm going to look at this one. This is one of the other multiple choice answers in the book. It's just uh, make a nice territory over here. It actually helps expand this moyo as well. It's a very nice, well-rounded move. Um, but when you see the, the, the correct answer, I hope you'll understand why this isn't the best move. These are both very similar. Um, this one's just a very risky space since it's very aggressively close to your opponent. Your opponent's just gonna come in here and, and fight immediately. This one's this one is like halfway in between, right? It's it's not building territory as much as, it, and and it's like I want to build territory, but I also want to influence over here. So it's a little it's a little in between both points. It's also a fine point, but neither of these are there. This is the correct answer for the first oh, one. Yes. Actually, How many people got it right? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six and a half? Why the half? Uh, it was my second choice. That doesn't count. Was the no. other one. No. That doesn't count. Wrong. 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 This is a test. <laughs> <laughs> You've taken tests before, right? Yeah, but we get hard to credit on tests. Like, 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 you're the type of person that goes to a math test and you see a problem is two plus two and you're like, it's either four or five. I'm not sure. <laughs> you argue with the teacher afterwards and give you partial credit, right? <laughs> uh, maybe. There are any problems here where, where you can convince me, but uh, why is this move correct? Why is this move so good? Well, it does, it does what I was thinking of doing, but better, because you're, <laughs> you're, you're basically splitting these two. Yeah, you're, you're making this stone stronger. You're potentially even taking a few points while doing it. But more importantly, you're starting to make eye, eye space inside of your opponent's uh, area of influence. And so you're not just running, you're actually building a little something and getting more stability. The problem with just running is you might just run forever. And wouldn't it be nice if you could just make a couple eyes and never have to run, and then use that base to then invade or do other things. So this is a little bit more active. It's also the nice weak point for this shape. It really aims at a follow-up move here uh, later on. So you can, you can start exploiting more weaknesses. But this is the type of urgent move we want to find when we're deep in our opponent's uh, area of influence. If we can just make a base for our stones, just do it, right? You're, you'll, you're gonna save yourself a lot of Potential, potential aggression against you later on. Base. Yeah. Base. All right. Next board. Candidates. Here, grab some red stones. Put on your candidate. Yeah. Anyone else? Other candidates? That was it. You got all collect. All, all of you guys came up with two moves. I don't believe it. Yeah, but mine is a terrible move. <laughs> Tengen, always wrong. Steve, I know you're kind of newish to this class, but dude, Tengen, always wrong. Never going to give you a move with Tengen. Never going to give you a problem. Not going to happen. Good. Anything else? Last call. Going once. Going twice. All right, so uh, Tengen, always wrong, just de facto. <laughs> Tell me about this move. This is the best I could come up with. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are you trying to do with that move? I'm trying to uh, connect this to that. Oh, nice. Those. You're thinking on a, on a building on a global scale. There's a few problems with it. And that's it doesn't white. defend anything. These these are aggressively attached to it, so you got to respond. All right. right, right, right. Now, this this group is is kind of important. Right? Yeah. I mean, your, your opponent can spoil your shape there and take away your base. So so that's. Like, like this is kind of like a wishy-washy kind of move. Like, I kind of need to help that, but I'm also kind of greedy at the same time. So let me do a little bit of both and see if it works out. Yeah, comes yeah. Out and wash. It yeah. doesn't really do either. They with need terrible help of those guys. Oh, yeah, it's going to be one of these two moves. One of these two is the correct answer. You guys did? One of these two is, is it. Uh, let's do raise your hand if you think this is the correct move. <laughs> raise your hand if you think this is the correct move. Wow, even the whoever put it on the board. <laughs> no longer yeah, thinks. Like no longer, yeah, this, this is wrong. Why is this wrong? An invasion plan? 
Is there a tag? It's, it's, you're, you're being attacked. So this, is, this, is, this is kind of a shape problem. White has a really good move here. <laughs> Are you going to connect? Uh, <laughs> if you connect, then white will get another move, right, to yeah. do whatever. And now, how is the health of these, this clump? Not, not great. There's really not much potential for eye space. Now, here's the interesting thing. Robots actually don't mind the shape. They play the shape wow. much more frequently than humans. This, they, they will actually let this go and potentially exist in a bunch of game positions, like this almost exact shape. I'm still going, my, my suggestion to you guys, uh, certainly in terms of Go, is to realize how big of a move this actually is. How many eyes does this black group have? They're officially zero, mm -hmm. yeah. but what I want you to appreciate is now how easy it is for you to get eyes. Let's say your opponent plays here, mm. and you're like, ah, screw that. Mm. And your opponent plays here, and you're like, ah, screw that. <laughs> and you play over here, and your opponent's like, aha, I gotcha. Well, you play here. Okay, and you can play here. And you can play here. How many eyes do you have? Two. It's, it's, it's basically almost two eyes. Um, there's a little potential problem here, but it's really not even a problem because you, you still have two eyes. Like this is, you have to respond, you have to not respond again is what I'm trying to show you. Uh, which means in this type of position, This is actually a really strong shape. So the difference between zero eyes and two eyes is one move. It's, it's a big deal. And especially if this is strong, how does this white group feel? Scared. If white doesn't do anything, you're going to attack it. As long as you're strong, you can, you can go on the attack. And the same is true to this stone, though, though to a lesser extent. If you're strong over there, boom, you can attack it. If you are not strong, Mm, big difference. This whole part of the board will come under White's influence. Okay, how many people got this one? One, two, three, four. Good. All right, carry on. All right, throw your candidates on. Go. Other candidates. Uh huh. More candidates. Tanny. I I actually have the first one. Oh okay. It's not the one I wrote down, but I considered it for quite a while. Okay. Good. Good. Anything else, Steve? That's oh, there. You need to put on two candidates. No. No, okay, good. Last call, three, two, one. Uh, one of these moves is correct. Let's talk about some other ones. <laughs> uh, this one is just a really weird shape. Well, we, that's my role. <laughs> that's your role. <laughs> that's your role. It's one of the weird shapes around the board. Uh, this this large knight's jump we often play in isolation when our opponent when our opponent doesn't have any stones around and we have a lot of flexibility. When our opponent has a lot of stones around, it's just going to get cut. It's, unless you have a, a good reading sequence, a good fighting sequence, it's not a good connection to make because it's not a connection. Your opponent will just cut it. So I'm going to rule this one out. Uh, these two are similar. I would say this one's better. And so I'm actually going to rule out this one by saying this one's better. The reason why this one is better is that in this shape, you're trying to undercut the base a little bit. This move doesn't quite do that as well as this one. And so this is just a natural knight's approach. We're threatening to undercut the base. It makes your opponent feel like, feels like he has to respond. So if you're going to play one over here, this is the better one. That being said, this doesn't take into account this side of the board. Over here, how strong are these two black stones? Pretty weak. They're getting weaker. Right now they're outnumbered, three to two. Do we want to make another weak stone? Do we want to put another weak group on the board? Mm, probably not. 
Probably not until at least it's a fair, a fair fight, and then we can go on the attack. So this one's a little bit too aggressive. If we play here, our opponent's just gonna do here or here, and now these two stones are even weaker. <laughs> And we, didn't, we now have another weak group we'll have to tend to later. So creating multiple weak groups, mm, not great. To some degree, this is very similar as well. We're creating another weak group. It's not as weak as a stone over here because this is kind of like white's influence. Over here, we do have some backup, but the idea still applies. So it's one of these two. Uh, I'm gonna take these off and replace them with stones. How is this one? Solid, but it might be slow. It's, it's too slow, it's not, it's not actively doing much. And the thing is, this move is so similar, it gets us a little even bigger of a, of a corner piece, mm -hmm. and it actually really prompts a response from our opponent. It's much more severe to follow up this stone. If our opponent doesn't respond, right, we can just play here next, take a big corner, and have their base completely undercut. If we play this one, this, we can't really play this next, right? We don't, we have, we, we don't have another play from this side. So it's a little bit more forcing. It's a little bit more big of a corner. So this is the superior one. This is the correct move. Uh, we'd expect this sequence to follow. White here, um, black here. And then white will play, there's a couple options here for, for various follow-ups. Um, white can continue. Basically, black will get a small corner or get sealed in. Um, there's a couple ways for this to go. Uh, but before we see all this, the part you need to feel on this board is that this is the urgent part of the board. This is where the weaknesses are. This is where the, the bases have not been defined. Uh, there needs to be a little land squabble over here. And so the first person to dig into their side of the ground is going to get an advantage. And so if you play here, you found the right direction, but this is the better shape in this case. This is a little bit more. How many people got it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Great, nice. Next board. Get our shiny stones. Show me some candidates. Don't be shy. Step right up. <laughs> one candidate. You guys are so brave. This is harder than the other ones. This is harder than the other ones. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this board. There's really like two and a half spheres of war, theaters of war going on. Oops, is that not right? There. Uh -huh. Oh, Tanya's gonna sink in. Coming out of the woodwork. All right. So, uh, how, do I, how do I want to step through these? <laughs> Nobody got it right. No, you guys got it right. You guys got it right. And you also found some of the other multiple choice answers in the book. Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking there had to be yeah. multiple good options. So there's multiple good options here, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's talk about, no, I don't know. They're all, they're all reasonable in, with their own reasoning. <laughs> let's start with this one. Not the right answer. What is good about this move? Builds that side. Yeah, it helps the right side. What is bad about this move? There's some important things. There's more important things to do than building the right side. Yeah. Uh, in Go, part of the game, especially in the early game to middle game, is recognizing when it is time to play an urgent move versus when it is time to play a big move. This is like a classic example of a big move, but there's nothing urgent. What makes a move urgent? Life and death status of groups is affected. Good, like it affects either the life and death status of your own group or your opponent's groups. There are times in the board where there's nothing that can be affected, like all the groups are really stable. That's the time to play a big move. However, this is not that time. So, this is also very similar. It actually helps the corner a little bit. There's a little bit of confusion over here, so this one I like a little bit better. But it's also not a move we're really excited to play. You see how flat the black stones are over here? Third line, third line, third line, third line. So even though it, it's, it's, in a, it's in a useful direction, it forms a base, it helps out one of these little squabbles, it's so not ambitious. It's just not, you know, we're not, we're not really putting a lot of pressure on our opponent, we're also not asking for very much. 
This is like, you know, taking, you know, asking, asking a guy who has a million dollars, hey, can I have 50 cents? It's, it's like, he's like, sure, have 50 cents. No <laughs> Uh, all right, those three moves here we'll address as a group. <laughs> Let's go over here. This one is perhaps one of the most intriguing moves. What does this move get you as black? Really big corner. Yeah, really big corners. Control of this whole quadrant of the board. We're a little bit worried about white standing up here and then fighting over this stone. Yeah. So it's going to be a fight if white gets to play here first. And this move just stops it and takes a bunch of points. It's a really big move. But it's not the big, and it, it feels pretty urgent too, just because whoever gets it, you know, will have control. It's not the biggest move though, and so this is this is a really nice move. It's one of the multiple choice selections. Um, but there's something even more important that we can do than prevent a fight from starting. This move is actually very similar. It actually very it 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 threatens the base of these three stones. It also kind of actually acts as a very far away attack on this stone. And I like this move a lot. But similarly, these three stones are kind of flexible and actually doesn't apply direct pressure to this stone. So again, it's sort of like working our way towards a fight that hasn't happened yet. Like, it's like we're, we're you know, hiring our generals and, and lieutenants and mustering the army, but we're not actually starting a conflict. And so it feels like it, that if, if there's something else more urgent that needs to be done where we can start a conflict directly, uh, this, is, this is more of a long-term planning kind of move. Over here, uh, I'm going to take off these two stones. We'll come back to them. This is the correct move. But let's, let's talk about why. What is going on in this corner? Who has a base? No one has we don't know yet. We don't know yet. And there's a lot of tension here. When you see white, black, white, black, and we don't know who owns the bases, OK, that's, that's going to get important real fast. Uh, there's also no relationship right now between these two stones unless we have another stone here on the fourth line. And so at any point, white plays a move like this. How does this stone feel? Separated. Separated, like we don't have two eyes with this stone. It's very hard to make two eyes because we're pincered on both sides. How does this black stone feel? Not as bad as this one, but do we have the stone here yet? If we had a stone here, this stone actually feels okay. Remember this move, how we had it before? So this would feel okay. But we don't have that. And white doesn't really feel a lot of pressure. Like white is actually kind of out, can come back and kick and make a base. We're not really, eh, we're, just, we're just sitting on the back of our heels. With a move like this, uh, white's actually under the one under pressure now. White is now sealed in this corner. And if white doesn't take the time right now to make a base, uh, we're going to kill white. And that's a very large corner. Like if that white stone is dead, uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's about 30 points in a corner where we've played I, I, actually two stones, right? Because one, one stone is kind of canceled out. White like played one, we played one. So you get 30 You can expect to get 10 points out of a two stone corner. We're, we're on the verge of getting 30 with adding one more stone, making a three stone corner. So this is, this is very directly threatening. It links up our stones. And <clears throat> I know we want to build this. If we do it directly, it's actually not a good plan because we're going to leave weaknesses over here. But if we can solve our weaknesses over here and build a wall here, all of a sudden this becomes so much easier to build. And so we'd expect something to happen maybe like this. White will squirm around. Uh, maybe even white will play here. There's a couple different options here depending on what we want the shape to look like. If we play the, the Q version, and just kick. And then the Q version, they probably connect, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> if they connect like this, now we're going to come back and play here. But even if you want to continue building, now you're going to play a move like this. And so we actually have a really nice right-hand side. Um, white is alive in the corner. Like White doesn't have any problems, but neither do we. So we solved our problems and built something much bigger than White's corner. In this case, I would actually probably leave this alone and come switch back to here. But notice how we were able to play here and then still get Sente to play back. These other moves. Uh, here. Uh, you guys were finding this one. Very similar, but it's a line off. 
This one doesn't actually hem white in, because what can white do to, to split? Touch in the middle. Yeah, touch. Go jump right through the middle. <clears throat> and so, it's kind of tragic. <laughs> <laughs> it's the right idea, but white just pops through. Bummer. Notice white can't really do that with a stone here. Like if we, if we try to cut through, we just get <clears throat> hammered. This stone's in a very nice place. Uh, this move, Iron Pillar. I, I, white just comes up. <laughs> we still get split. So maybe it helps that stone get out or build a base or do these other things, but it just doesn't, doesn't actually do it strong enough. We need to connect. And we need to connect with some pressure. So this is the move we are looking for. How many people got it? Just two. Oh, tricky. That was hard. That was hard? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's too many. Good. <laughs> All right. Last one of this particular uh, type of problem. <clears throat> this was also hard. They did, uh, this set kind of did get harder. The others, I think, are all kind of the same difficulty, but these two tables kind of went from easy table to harder problem, harder table. What I chose. Candidates, give me the tiny ones. I'm going to stir now. Yeah, I know. I'll take it too. Push up. Well, candidates. I expect to get like at least seven or eight good candidates on here. Yeah. This one, this problem is got a lot of ideas. Oh, what are you thinking? Ideas. <laughs> yeah, yes. Rapidly changing their answers. <laughs> <laughs> it would be great is if we get a uh, we get more candidates on here than people who are in the <laughs> <laughs> Five seconds. Only five candidates, that's not enough. 20 once, going twice, gone. All right, one of these moves is best. People are still looking at their sheets. Uh, let's talk about down here first. Neither of these are, are the best move. Um, they're obviously trying to get black to break through and not let white connect these two groups. However, how important is it for white to connect these two groups? Well, they're both strong. They're both pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah, like they don't, they don't real, you know, connecting groups is really useful when they're weak. Connecting two strong groups, mm, not useful. But maybe you're thinking, well, I don't want white to make a big wall here and seal, and seal me in. Well, walls are really useful when you, uh, you're going to attack something. At the current moment, black has no weak groups on this board. Right? Everything is actually pretty strong. And so, you know, neither of these moves are really going to contribute overall all that much to the outcome of this game. What you can see happening over here is that uh, the biggest area of development, really for either player, is this part of the board. And so this is, this is the more important area. Uh, if you look at this board, uh, one way to think about it is that um, black actually has a lot of cash, or almost cash. This is actually pretty solid territory. You know, it's about 20 points. White, white is, can, uh, has black undercut here, so this isn't that many points, but uh, we can expect to get, uh, you know, five to 10 points, even, even with the undercut there. Um, over here, there's a little bit of a def potential defect here, but other than that, we're pretty solid. There's another 20 points there. So black is looking at a solid, you know, 45 to 50 points. Does white have a solid 45 to 50 points? No. Not at all. Like, there's 10 here, 5 here, 10 there, 5 there. White has 30. And call me. But what else does white have? Potential influence. influence. Yeah. This area, your eye needs to be drawn here and going, that's a lot of white stones. They're all kind of in the same region of the board that may all come together to form way more than 20 points. <laughs> Uh, in this particular case, where is the most of the potential? Where can white find these extra 15 points that white needs? Here. And here. And so right now I'm going to rule off this stone. This stone, it's nice if we're going to build this, but it's actually really hard to build this directly. Like if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to shoulder hit this, okay, so it's a black stone, and white, I'm going to play this, and black's going to build this. You can do that, except your, your potential is a little more Swiss cheese than white's. And what happens when white just pokes through here and builds a wall here and lets you, lets you take an extra five points here? 
maybe 10, optimistically. But then white builds a wall through here. Well, all of a sudden now white has 30 points of potential that's almost turned into territory. So it's an interesting idea, but it's not, it's not a good direction. These two moves. This one's interesting. Uh, it's, not, it's not the right answer, according to the book, um, but I'd almost give a half credit answer for this. This stone is actually hard, hard for white to deal with directly. Um, it's got, it's, it's, this is a, almost a little bit too far apart, but that being said, white will still come after it and you will have a little bit of a trouble, a troublesome time really making the stone feel safe. Uh, you do have some, some nice Tesuji type moves over here, like there's things like this and like this and like this. You can kind of lean on this corner. You can try to expose this cut. Like the, you have resources over here. So I'm actually not 100% sure that white can kill this stone cleanly, which is why I can't write it off. This is not the book answer. I think, I think this is a, if you're the type of player who's either A, really good at reading and life and death, or B, kind of an ass. <laughs> this is a great move. <laughs> right, if you can, if you can, if you can outread your opponent, or or just you know play just ass mo asshole moves, like great. Uh, a much more patient and and normal expected thing would just be to shoulder hit this. And now you can see this is a sector line. White. This is sort of White's influence. You're actually just a little bit outside of it. White doesn't have a good attack on you. There's nothing White can really do to punish. Um, White can crawl through here and just take some third line points, but you know what? That's really not enough. Like, you're just going to be happy just, just keeping white low. And uh, in here, we said white needed about 15 points to take the lead. If white ends up from here to here, this is only 10 points. So if this is all that white gains, that's not enough to win. So the shoulder hit is a very reasonable, safe, and uh, keep, it keeps in mind the total board position move. So. How many people got this one? Two, three, just three. Tanny, you're on fire, dude. I got two right. <laughs> you don't mind, I got three. I think two, I mean, All right. I don't know. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's take our shiny stones. All right, new type of problem. Let's go on to the uh, shape Tasuji kind of problems. Two weeks from the I don't know. <laughs> I'm going here. Uh, do figure out your numbers accordingly, because you guys may have counted this as, uh, I don't know, whatever you did. Yeah, 11, 9, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yeah, so for many of you, this would be like 11. All right, give me a candidate. That's a good move. problems are a lot right. easier. Yeah, there's not going to be that many candidates. <laughs> no, probably don't need to make stones. Do you find anything else that works? Interesting? Oh, I have that. Okay, good. All right, this is the right answer. <laughs> Uh, black has two liberties here, has a weak stone, looks like is this a giant white corner. But there's a ladder that you can make. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty cool ladder. How do we make it? White connects. Then you go here. You go here. Good. And you can see this just goes to the corner and dies. And awesome. It's not too hard of a sequence, but this is the kind of position that you need to be able to find. You need to be able to see these in your games if you want to be a single-digit queue. If you're having trouble reading this out, you just got to do more problems. Like you just got to put in the time and the effort. Like uh, it's that's what Go is, you know. On some level, when you find when you look at a position like this, find the most severe thing you can do. Try to use your instincts to come up with some shapes, and then. You just gotta read out these sequences. And so, just reading out this ladder, it's a little bit of a funky ladder, but that's, that's just a nice little problem. How many people found this move? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna count Alex, he's giving me a half hand again. Nine, all right, good, nice, nice job. So, yep, nice little shape, CG. kill your opponent. Real clean. This one. Oh my God, so classic. This is, this is what separates the, the children from the adults. And actually, I mean that the other way, where the children get this and the adults don't. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is the move. This is, this, is a, this is called a tombstone Tesuji that we've already played the tombstone, we've already made the tombstone shape. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And now we're finishing it. It was like you made this one as obvious as you could for tombstone. <laughs> I didn't make it obvious, but the book is testing you on. Do you know the shape, right? Yeah. Like, like this is a classic kill, kill in the corner kind of shape. This throw in. 
Uh, let's play out the sequence. You throw in there. That's not a white stone. <laughs> White's going to take this stone. What's the next move? Uh, connect in there. Like. Yeah, it's real not obvious, and White's like, aha, I have one eye, you have no eyes, therefore you're dead. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's really actually, nice. the eyes doesn't matter, it's just a three to three capturing whites, black moves first, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. Black plays there and kills before white does. If white says, aha, I'm going to run this way. Then you can Atari the three. I don't know if it's better to Atari them or to block. It's yeah, probably better block. to block. Yeah, you block. Block, block first. Yeah. I might go, aha, now I have two eyes. I have one there, one there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you still no, only have one. You can do that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, this is this, this is still stuck. <laughs> I don't know. Here? Or here, let's do that one. That's probably the most annoying. Oh, it's like, aha, I'm going to kill this stone. No, no you're not. Black's going to Atari this way once. And then Atari this way. And... White can get a little problem. bit outside. Actually, actually white, Black should play here again. Sorry, black, White keeps running, Black has to keep running. But as soon as black gets enough liberties, then black will come back and, and kill this. Uh, yeah, this is just this is just white doesn't have enough liberties after you throw in. If you do anything else, uh, that's not there. Uh, what else can black try? What if black just plays here directly? Actually, it still works, huh? <laughs> does, I, does this really still work? Because this is the answer. I want to know if I should get credit for it. <laughs> um, can white just can white connect instead? That's what I was trying to figure out. Yeah. Right here, right now. Yeah. Uh, instead of this. Yeah. Let's find out. Black here. White. Oh, it does work for uh, white. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't work. Because I'm sorry, it doesn't, it doesn't work for you. Because okay, yeah, yeah. there is a shared liberty now, so the eye does matter. The eye does matter because they made a shared liberty. Yep. Yeah. You're right. Yep. So nope, you got to throw in. I see, okay. <laughs> the reign of Tan Tanny has come to an end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is one of those cool shaped things. This is why you never want to own a stone in one one point. Like, it's, it's so much worse to have a stone here. <laughs> right, this doesn't work. If you throw in now, I just make two eyes. Don't have one one stones, kids. <laughs> uh, but tombstone, this is a... Uh, let me see if I can back this up. All right, black will play here. And goes this way, you come down. You play here, and then here, and then here. This is the point that you come to this in the problem, in the sequence. Those are the ones that I find hard to find when it's like backed up several steps and you yeah. have to well, know the course. tombstone is coming. Look, <laughs> look, I'm setting this up for you. <laughs> We're playing T-ball here. <laughs> but the next level is, yeah, you gotta be able to see these two two cuts, these tombstone cuts on the, before you get to this point. But yep, that's a shape. It'll happen in a lot of Go problems. Like this is just one of your classic problem shapes. Like, can you read this out? How many people got it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Nice, okay. Good, about half. All right, this one, I love this problem. This is a problem that I'm sure a lot of people didn't get. And once you see it, you're like, oh, I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like it should work, right? Like, black is just hosed. Yeah, that's yep. a pretty good move. Is that really it? That is really <laughs> it. I, I got it. You can just net those three stones. Yeah. Those three stones are dead. There's no escape for them with that move. Uh, if you try, white, black, uh, white, black Atari, and it's dead. Right, there's no, there's no escape. Can't go this way. This Atari, run into this stone here. Doesn't matter if you exchange this first. White well, still only has two liberties, has no time. This gets Atari and death. This is just a net. Uh, yes, that stone is intentional. You cannot ladder this. If you went here, could they break the ladder? No, wait, uh, for this move? Oh no, right here. Yeah, the ladder's broken. Oh, oh because of that. Oh, yeah. okay, I didn't stop. <laughs> it's all right. It's, you call that a net. Is that, is that also called a loose ladder? In this position, I'm barely, but it's it's like one move technically a loose ladder, so it's a net. We're calling it. A net. <laughs> yeah, this is this is one you either see or you don't, and it's and dude, I screwed this up in games so many times. It's like, oh yeah, that's a net, and I already played a move. Nope, I should have just netted and killed everything. 
not not my finest, proudest go moment. <laughs> Missing nets like this, but you can just net it. It's a hard nut to see. Like it's 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 just I don't know counterintuitive. Not your normal classic net. Uh, how many people found this move? Great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow, that's that was split right down this line here. <laughs> All you guys delinquent. You're still here. <laughs> Unable to see net group. Quote. Get enough oxygen <laughs> over here. <laughs> All right, let's move on to some slightly more life and deathy type test UG. This one, black has three stones in trouble. Black doesn't want them to be in trouble. I found this one in a game recently. It was so satisfying. Wow. That's the move. Yeah. Such a sweet move. Uh, yeah, this this the shorts white's liberties. It looks like it looks like white is going to win this caption race, right? Three to two. Black only has two liberties. White has three. It looks like it's just great for white. But this move shorts white liberty, so it's still two to two. But it makes this unapproachable, so it actually adds liberty to black. That's these little diagonal uh, side edge of the game board moves. We actually saw these not too long ago in another class we did. Um, really useful when you're when you're having these little fights at the edge. That diagonal diagonal first line move can potentially make another half eye, and a half eye can count as an extra liberty. Uh, what have you played here? That's what I did. You still win. Uh, Do you? Do you not? Do you? All right. White plays here. Mm -hmm. What do you play now? And black goes down the other side. And then. Well, then you everybody walks away and it's a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bill, do you want do you want everyone to walk away without injury? I'm happy with a second. <laughs> <laughs> to be a second is a victory. <laughs> uh, mm, but that one, you got to have the taste for blood, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A little, get, you got to get you a little, little taste of blood. Well, this is. This is the thing, we have to teach AI is more about Seki's <laughs> life. So that way when they take over, they'll let us live in the corners. Ah, all right, all right, that's, that's good. That's my bit for mankind, creating Seki's right. wherever I go. Good, how many people got it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Another good score, good. Nice. I'm also seeing a different set of hands, a slightly different set of hands. Uh, over here. So, some of you, so I like how this is differentiated. Some of you guys were better at those boards and some of you were not as good as these. And vice versa. This one. All right. What a good problem. Black to play. Do we need candidates? Do we need the, the shiny stones for this one? We might. Nobody's moving in. No one. <laughs> no one wants it. I'll, I'll put something down. Yeah, okay. that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that was fine. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's fill in the rest, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yep, yep, good. All right, let's look at these one at a time. So we got the little. Uh, Tetris shape here. <laughs> Let's start with this one. Not a correct answer, but why? Well, white comes down with Right there. And then here, I'm going to change this to a black stone. Black's going to take. And then? White just live. makes two eyes. Two eyes. Living shape. That's a, that's a life. If this liberty is not filled in, it's not, if, er, is this, if this liberty is gone, then it's not alive. Right, because black has a stone here, black and a tar in extent. As long as you have liberty, that's, uh, that's totally life. So not not good enough in that case. Let's look at this one. What if white connects? What's the next move? Is it the go problem that creates go problems? Mm -hmm. Here? Yeah. Let's die. Here? You just connect. 
And you actually are, if black plays here, just make an eye in the corner. Like, black doesn't actually have enough liberties to do anything. White has too much space. Same thing if black plays here, just connect. This one is a little too, too aggressive here. It doesn't take advantage of the shape in any way. This one. Here, this one? Or right here? No, that will. Uh, that's interesting. Hmm, huh. that might work actually. But now black can run it. That might work. <laughs> Not. Uh, but even. Like, it looks like black can link up here, but black can't, because this throw in, and black can't connect, so I take the whole thing. Yeah. So this might work. I think there's multiple ways to make this work. Mm. But, uh, that looks like a good response, which I'm kind of surprised by, because it wasn't my reaction. This doesn't do anything. Yeah, I don't, I don't actually see a move here for black after this. Oh, good. So at least one choice. How about this one? Yeah. That's the move. And this is a this is a, a common shape you need to look at when you see three stones in a row. Where's the weak point? One space jump. One space jump one. from the center. Yeah, this is what you have to check. Uh, what if White tries this? Right. Atari. Can't make an eye there. Descend doesn't matter. We can throw in there, we can kill here, we can do whatever we want. Black can just destroy the shape. Uh, how about this one? Yeah. Poke this way. If white plays here, check out this Atari. Atari, if white connects, <laughs> yeah. dies. Mm -hmm. If white blocks this way, that's fine, that's a false eye. So just one eye. Uh, other responses? That one. Cut? Yeah. Uh, I think cutting uh, is incorrect. Uh, Hane under? I think Hane under is incorrect. This one's perhaps the trickiest one. Is better than Hane Andrew. This one, this one actually looks like a really terrible co. <laughs> better response. Tetsuji time. Uh, two one. Mm. The one two. No. This is a bad idea. Oh yeah. Yeah, connect Seki. Two. Not no, this one? Same thing? Three, two. Oh, three, two, cut. Three, two, cut. Uh, what do you do now? You're gonna make a co. So white takes a co. It's better than co. Oh man. What if you... This is, this is a great SCG, guys. Oh, push okay. towards the edge? Yes, this yeah. one. Check this move out. And White's like, you're being dumb. Now you, now you play right here right. and check this out. Now there's, uh, essentially you have three liberties, mm -hmm. right? Because White can't approach over here. This is self Atari for White. See, so White plays there, you Atari. Mm -hmm. This move. Now I know why I'm all better than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> No one can find this. <laughs> this problem kind of felt like 
cheating getting the right answer because mostly I knew that the other ones didn't work, but I wasn't sure <laughs> how to you do sure all the to... variations. Like I tried reading this yeah. and I'm like, yeah. I can't read that variation in particular. I couldn't figure it out. I but... read a lot of responses where I killed it and I was like, yeah, it's that one. Exactly. <laughs> that was totally what it was. I found ways to live out of like all my answers. Exactly. Yeah. And so I was like, well, it must be there. Well, this, this <laughs> but in a real game, maybe I would have right. failed to. So this, this is arguably a better problem than the original then. <laughs> Yeah, Maybe. that's like actually, that's yeah. a hard problem. Yeah. But then if we sat there thinking about just that one for a while, we wouldn't have it's also probably true. got it. All right, well, good. How many people got it? <laughs> one, two, three, four. Oh, sadness. Okay. All right. Last problem on this particular set. I think this was the easiest one of the yeah. life and death. Well, yeah. What do you got? I was trying to figure out how it was a trick problem. Yes, that was, I spent more time trying to... Yeah. <laughs> See, false. I'll jump in. Yep. Oh, Bill. No? I'm an idiot. You're an idiot. It just makes co for life. Yeah. But I like co for life. I know. You, <laughs> you like your secchies. You like your codes. You want, like, you want the whole world to this magical place and now. <laughs> You don't want any like true like. That's why everybody like, loves to come to the ghost center and beat Bill at a game. He <laughs> <laughs> actually kind of says a lot about yeah, you're you're playing. It's, <laughs> you're looking for these you know kind of balanced solutions. There's a you believe in justice and on the go board. Yeah, yes. There's a, everybody yeah. should win by a half. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is not the way to to do that. Yeah. Uh, this this one yeah leads to co. Yeah, that's the one. And so there's a big difference here. We just put some black stones. And black plays here. White's like, oh, I can make two eyes. No, he just Atari turns it into a false eye. And if white blocks here, then that also falsifies it. So it's pretty, pretty, you know, three move, life and death problem. Pretty straightforward, but you just can't fall in the trap of the, playing the obvious move that looks like the one that makes two eyes. Or the prevents two eyes, rather. Yeah, it fell for the trap. Yeah. How many people got it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pretty good. All right, last table. We got some end game problems. Let's keep moving the chairs around. This one. Good. Where? Where's our red yeah. Put, put, put a can, go get the candidate stone. You need, you need <laughs> no. the candidates. Sorry, there they are. Yeah. Okay, there's one. There's two. Love it. Look, at all, look at all these moves. Let's <laughs> <laughs> someone put down my move. Yeah. All right, okay. nothing else? Good. That's all we got? That's pretty good for an endgame problem. That is pretty. Not straightforward per se, but <laughs> pretty limited in objective. One of these is correct. Two of them are not. Hold your hold your applause to the end, kids. Uh, let's take these off and go through them one at a time. First, let's look at this throw-in. Mr. Fancy Pants Zach. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure what's going it's on. An Atari. So he's gonna, now what's the follow-up? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that it's a move that looks really cool. <laughs> you, you get credit oops, for finding the coolest looking move. But that will give you your it does not heart attack. It does not. <laughs> yeah, like it gives, your, it gives you, it does give your opponent a heart attack for three seconds. So if you're playing against like you know uh, uh, someone who's who's on life support and you really need to win the game, maybe <laughs> you know you can use that strategy. But otherwise, this is, this is nothing. <laughs> All right, this one also looks very cool. But, and if you find this one, you have to be able to read. I thought this was a life and death problem. It, it looks like it turns into a life and death problem, but if you read this out, you realize you can't actually kill it this way. And that's, that's the problem. Is next move for white. Connect. Yeah, connect there, next move for black. Atari the two yeah, stones. All right, take away this eye, threaten to get out, and kill two stones. But now, where's the next move for black? And you kind of realize you can't actually kill it. 
Yeah, we can try some things. We can try this one space jump. But what if White just throws in here? Yeesh. Okay. Okay. But then Atari? You actually have too many liberties. One way to think about this is it looks like uh, there's a six space, or it's, it's really an eight space, right? Eight space normally without any stones would be alive. If black adds two stones, th in theory, you can kind of treat it like a better than six space. What's the status of a slightly better than, oh, sorry, it's actually a 10 space. Oh, man, 10 space. <laughs> yeah. It's like a better than eight space. <laughs> but it's still alive, right? We still can't quite short the liberties fast enough. If black had an extra liberty, maybe it was more like this, or you know, more like this. Um, now, now it's much more interesting, right? Because now the liberties are much closer. But black has no liberties, and eight spaces is plenty to live. Now moves like this become pretty intriguing. Right, this is actually big trouble for white. <laughs> I don't even know what would be best here. Uh, da, 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 da. Maybe this. This looks good. Yeah. So there's this co here, but there's also this. So, to live. so it still actually works for but anyway, it's more interesting. Um, this then. problem was harder when I thought it was a life and death problem. <laughs> mm, neat. <laughs> Alright, this one. Yeah. Cut here, yeah. white connects, uh, descend yeah. and kill, right? There's no right. It's, guys. Yeah. I could clearly see how white could still survive though. So. <laughs> right, you were trying to kill everything. I was trying to kill everything. Yeah. So the well, other Well good. One, if you, you can try yeah. to you should try to kill everything and, yeah. and you should be able to read out and go, oh that doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. What else can I get? Yeah. Uh-huh. Alright, how'd you do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Shouldn't have overthought that one. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. All right, another one good one, sorry. I was trying to kill everything again. <laughs> <laughs> it's black to play, what are you trying to kill? <laughs> the entire, well, I tried to turn it all in. Black just defends the corner. I'm kidding, you got that too. Yeah, it was black like, defends the corner that way. Defending that. Without Oh, black to play. play. Black oh, to play. Right. Just doing this as a white to play. That's what I'm doing. Oh my god. I think it works. I need to think about this problem. There's one rule in my class, right? And any day there's a workshop, it's black to play, period, right? Like, that's all. If you just show yeah. up, you just know that. I did this as white to play, so I have to think about it a little bit right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I'm going to take all three of these off, we'll but we'll keep them as candidates. Yeah, there's a problem here. White can cut, right? Two, two. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And so, black wants to defend. And so, is this better to defend or this better to defend? I'm going to say two, two. It actually depends. It actually depends. But they're so close and similar, I'm going to write them both off. Both of these are wrong. <laughs> they're both good, you need them. But the problem is that once you play here, white's now going to play here. And you have to defend again. And so white made you play two stones inside your own territory. Keep that in mind. The trick here is you want to be able to defend against both of these pushes. Right without playing two steps. This move gains you that extra point. Because it obviously defends against this one, right? Like, we like already defended. But the question is, what happens now? Okay. Okay. Um, nothing, right? Like, like, it actually defends against this cut. And so it's really efficient. And when you have these corners that can be pushed in on both sides, you often want to play a move that defends against both sides. And that way you can defend two sides with one. Would you want to avoid doing this sort of thing earlier if you thought there could be co's and this establishes a lot more co-threats? No, because you're still taking Sente to do it, right? Like, yes, there's more co-threats this way, but it's that one point you gain is always worth it. Okay. Uh, Especially, uh, is, this, is this a threat to the whole corner? Oh, good point. I didn't think about that. But maybe you can live anyways. Uh, it looks like it kind of is, actually. Mm. Yeah, I think you have to 
you have to extend. Well, no, I don't think you do. I think I think this is. Oh no, you, you do have to. So if you if you if you respond to your co threat, it looks like that's the best follow up for white now. Or is it this? I'm not sure. Here, let's start with that one. Looks like this is natural. And there's a stone. There's a throw in here. A push here. Yeah, so you do need to respond in some way, because that's one. But, okay. Anyway, this is a cool move. Add it to your radars if you don't already have it. How many people got it? One, two, three. Oh. That's like one of our weakest problems we've had in a while. Last one. This is the final test of your self-evaluation. You got it, Tenny, go on. You gotta move? Yeah, go on. Can't be that because that was the other one. It can't be that, because it can't have two problems with two two is the answer. Yeah. You're writing it all yeah. the two, two is always the answer. <laughs> two one is always the answer. <laughs> Anything else? I'll go after those two. Wait, that's white? Isn't it's black to play. You gonna, he wants to connect. You want to connect? He was, he was connecting. So Are you connecting? Yeah, that's. Oh, okay. All right, good. Four candidates. Let's take them off and go through them. So I mean, this one, this is actually defended. If white plays here, you connect and white dies. So there isn't actually anything for white to do here. This is a good shape move. Both players want this move, but it's not. End game. We're just going to assume it's, it's not matter. So this is safe out there. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, this move is okay. Like, you know, it gets to a point. But why will just block? If you're like, aha, I have tricks. I'll run this stone out. It doesn't matter. It's still dead. <laughs> still dies. So this move gets you a point. This move is pretty cool because white can't play here, right? Self Atari. But uh, uh, we can say in the end it gets you two points. So if we're you know, just reviewing, one point, two points. Let's go for more. This one gets you more than two points. And it may not be obvious how, but we'll get there, trust me. Notice white can't block this way, that's self Atari. White can say, I'm gonna, I'm, I know what you're doing, I'm gonna block this way. In which case you go, oh, then I'm going to start a capturing race. You have two, I have three. We're done. If white says, aha, I'm going to do this. So when you connect, I'm going to uh, win this capturing race. This is the, the, the trickiest one. Uh, you throw in here. Yeah. Yep. And now when white, uh, white can't block, white can't extend, white takes, do you know what your next move is? Extend. Or no, just take the corner? Yes, just take the cornerstone. And white still can't con disconnect you. So you got way more than two points now. That's cool. Uh, other variations. Uh, when you play here, white just takes directly. Next move for black. Play one three. One three. Again, you're shorting, you're, this, this white group is, has a shortness of liberties, you're taking advantage of that. White can never connect. And so in the end, all right, let's say white connects, we play here. White comes down here. Uh, we get one, two, three, four, five, six points. Actually, maybe seven, because that one has to be filled in too. So we, we had the one point move, the two point move, and like the seven point move. Pretty big difference. So there were two at the same. Hmm? Two at the same one. Yeah, two, two, two points. Ah. And there's actually, I think there's another problem with the two-two point. There's a different corner of the board, right? So. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, it's three-two. Is there any two-two problem? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, the, the throw-in, the, the tombstone. Yeah, right. Yeah. Tombstone was also there. There's three two-two points, guys. <laughs> yeah, two's a oh, spot. okay. Three-two. There are three-two-two problems. There was another one I think that had two the same point too, right? Yeah. There was another one that had like yeah, two. Yeah, there were a couple. Yeah, two one on the four. one five. Two on the four five. Yeah. All right. Anyway, how many people got this? 
One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, good. About half. All right, so add up your score. Let's find out what ranks you are. Yeah. <laughs> I got six right. How? Okay, good. Six? Yeah. So that's, uh, you said that's uh, 11, 10, 11, 10, like 10 Q, right? Yeah. 10 Q, nice. Nice. Sure. Anyone else want to share? I got 11. You got 11 right? Nice. Dude. You gotta get 12 right to make it to 6 Q. Uh, I'm 3 Q, so those ranks. <laughs> <laughs> I got 13. But the 13 right, good. 6 Q. Nice. Actually, a little better than 6 Q. 12. That's good. 12. Well, uh, 6 Q. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 7. That's uh, in between. That's in between. That's uh, in between. What is it? 6. Uh, no, 8 Q and 10 Q. So, like 9 Q. Anyone else? Two. <laughs> uh, so you're below 11 Q. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got three. Three? Good. Okay, so maybe 12, 13 Q. 14 Q. I don't know. Uh, here's the thing. How many of you found that you got more of one type of these problems correct than the others? Well, what was the type of problem that you did better at? Well, I got all the life and death ones, which is weird because I'm better at the opening. But I think the opening problems were really hard because exactly. they were full board. Yeah. And the life and deaths were like, yes, this is the answer. Yeah. So this is, life and death problems have a concrete answer, and so it's yeah. a little bit well, so easier to feel better. The opening ones were in complex positions. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. We could, were like vaguely reasonable answers in different places. This is true. I, I think you could, you could divide the opening problems into two categories, right? The first three and then the second three? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the yeah, first yeah. Two, from the first two and then the second three, yeah. right? Sure. And so if you got the first two, right, that's kind of like like opening basics. Yeah. The, uh, the, sec the second group of three is more evaluatory. Like, you have to, like it's more about evaluation than opening, per se. So. I don't know if that teaches you anything. So, uh, anyway, I hope this motivates you to to look at yourself, look at your games, and go, oh, you know what I need help with? The opening, or end game, or shape, or life and death. Whatever, whatever you know, you felt terrible at. That's what you need to be working on. Uh, there is no more class for the rest of this year. Uh, next class for us won't be until January thirteenth. So you got almost, that's actually four weeks from now, right? Four weeks? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you have a month of just not having to, well, not that you guys study for me anyway, but. Go back and rewatch each video four times. Yeah, go back and rewatch all the videos four times. It'd be great. Come back, you superstar. Uh, so anyway, I wish you all you know, a good break, lots of go, take your time and, and you know, play lots of go, play as much as you can. Best thing you can do to be improving your games, uh, do problems. And play a game every day. If you can do, if you can do ten to twenty problems, and then play a game of Go, that's the best way to get better at Go. It turns out, I'll say third best way to get better at Go is to go watch a bunch of Nick Sabicki videos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, that's it. If you guys want to help me pick up the stones, that'd be great. And uh, yeah, no time for games tonight, but thank you all for coming. Thank See you. you in January. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.